Motion that LA32 Neighborhood Council request the developer USC to commit to working with the community and local schools to provide education, business, and scholarship opportunities to the local residents of Northeast Los Angeles, which basically pertains that USC would like for them to be a good corporate neighbor and help the residents of the area, which tend to be on the lower social quote unquote, very blue collar. And so what I would like to do is submit these two motions to the, to the board for consideration. And I would like for the neighborhood council to also review the ordinance, uh, agendize the ordinance for explanation, and also oppose the ordinance upon your review. Thank you. Um, uh, Lupi and Robbie? That's me. I want a copy of the ordinance, but there it is. Hi, my name is Lupi Andrade, and I live in the Boyle Heights community, specifically where this park is located, Hazard Park. I've been living there forever. Anyways, um, what I would like um, to see happen in the near future is that Councilman Weezer's office needs to have more transparency towards all communities. Boyle Heights, El Sereno, Lincoln Heights. It seems like any time we want to get any information, we have to take time out of our busy schedule, go downtown, look through the archives, research. And the thing is that that's why we elected these people in order for them to get the information, get it to their boys or you know the people that work for them, come out to our meetings and give it, give us transparency, give us everything that we need to um, know. In 2001, the city was in violation of um, many, many, many um, overspill violations. I don't know if anybody read about it, but the city had to pay out $2.2 billion that could have been reinvested into all our communities, you know? And the thing is that each day the city is in violation of these overspills because they're not fixing flood control, they're not fixing the wetness they're supposed to. Councilman Weezer has $750,000 allocated for Hazard Park. Unfortunately, um, he took that money back and he reallocated that to Garbanza Park. I don't know if that was a strategic move in order to get some votes from Highland Park community when he was running against Rudy Martinez. I really don't know why he did that, but when he amended those federal court orders, he stated that the community in the poll, while I've been in the community, my address hasn't changed and we still have not had any community meetings with Mr. Weezer. The thing about Hazard Park is that it's been there, maybe from our research, we have pictures dating back to 1904, 1884. Uh, this Saturday, the community has come together. We are celebrating our own park for being in existence for 120 years. Today, at the 11th hour, I get a call from Parks and Recreation, the director, stating that they want to be involved, they want to bring a ribbon, they want to help out, they want to call our city, they want to call Weezer. I've been speaking with Eric Rivas, very nice guy, very neutral. We like him a lot. I did invite him yesterday. Um, there is a big monument, a big rock there. There's a plaque that was supposed to be put there in memory of um, Sal Castro. Unfortunately, there was no money to put that, but yet yeah, Weezer took $750,000 and reallocated them. Thank God that we got um, a donation. People came forward after they heard about us. They've given us a free plaque. Right now it's being engraved for free. These people have worked with Sal Castro. We are going to dedicate that to him this Saturday. We're also gonna be celebrating 120 years of our park. So the city comes to me today and states to me that, well, they're gonna overpass the permit that I was supposed to get if they can be involved in some kind of ribbon cutting. In other words, they wanna take recognition. They wanna feel like they're involved, but the park's been there for 120 years. And the thing is that tonight there's a big celebration at White Memorial. It's their 100th year. And only like Kevin DeLeo, Garcetti, Weezer, they're all on this invite. I got the invite because I work with Monterey Park Hospital with partnership. And the thing is, I felt that it was more important for me to be here. While they're celebrating 100 years there, I need to let people know that our money is going to waste. We need more transparency. We need monthly updates of what our councilman's office is doing, any kind of motion moving forward. If there's some type of redevelopment, we need USC to give us an update because we have to be searching for this information and that's not right for us. Thank you. Thank you.
And um, that is yeah. it for public comment. I believe the other it, other cards are too much in items. So go ahead. Oh, Anthony Mazzano, right. public comment. Yeah, okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is Anthony Manzano. Uh, I came to speak on an item not on the agenda, and I'm thankful to the lady. I don't know your name specifically. Okay. I may have met you once or twice before. Uh, regarding history, and it's good that Hazard Park is trying to retain and preserve its history because it's really important. Our community was recognized yesterday at City Hall, mm. uh, and our community will actually be receiving five signs uh, indicating our community of Rose Hills. Uh, I've been able to trace back our history as well. Oddly enough, the reference in English, I've been able to find it on the clippings to the roads uh, are traceable to at least 1876. Let me, let me stay uh, out of your way. English, and some people say, oh, in those times it was during the Spanish era. But it's good to learn history. And I want to say thank you for taking that. What I'd like to share is uh, there's a lot of projects going on in the community. There's a lot of uh, different activities that we're working on. But as a whole, the neighborhood council needs to support uh, and promote influencing and uh, being able to pro progress, because once we always object, create obstacles, we don't want to, we proclaim, we deny, we want to stop everything, then we stop progress. And for us to live in the 21st century, we have to progress, because we're, we're past 1940, we're past 1970, we're even past the 1990s. We're already in 2013 and we need to progress. So the whole idea of saying no, 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 it's good to say no at times, perhaps, like there's a 710 project, which is a land use issue, because those impact houses. But if you're not impacting someone's specific home and you're not altering someone's life and saying, you know what, I'm going to get you, and it's in a benefit for everybody, then we should uh, implement progress. But the, uh, the thing is, is you have influence. And that's what this land use committee is for, is to be able to influence what we're going to do to our communities. So it's important that we're here, and I believe as land use committees, it's keen that you're aware of these projects and that you're aware of each of the communities that serve as indicated on the agenda that you have here this evening. And uh, thank goodness for you guys, or specifically the neighborhood council and the council member for the past several years that our community of Rose Hills will be recognized, and I'd say before Christmas at least, which is several months away, we'll be having some signs put up. Thank you very much. Good luck. Last to come in. Okay, that's... Um, does any more, I, I believe those are public comment cards, everything else which remains to agenda items on here? He wants to do a public comment because um, he's new. Yeah. Just walk up, brother. Just fill up the card over Yeah, because once we move on, this agenda is going to be packed, so. Yeah, yeah. You're going to talk and then fill it out. Thomas Varela. Go ahead and say it. Thomas Varela, Thomas Varela. Speech pen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 2483 Verde Street. LA 9003. Um, concerning, uh, I guess I'll just pick up where the gentleman left off. I live in Hazard Park. I'm a property owner. Family's been there approximately 100 years. So I have a little background in, in, in what's going on there. Um, yeah, I guess it depends on how you define uh, progress. I'm opposed to the concept that a private institution, a corporation, Although people keep trying to remind me, no, it's a medical school. No, it's actually a medical a corporation that is a medical school. It's uh, got a lot of power, a lot of influence, and you know they're kind of outmaneuvering us in terms of uh, helping, letting us decide what is good for our community. And it's a very restricted and small community, and so the street that they want to run through the park is. Um, it's giving away private, public land to a private corporation. I don't care how you couch it, that's what it is. And then the idea of, of widening Soto Street. Soto Street is not Olympic Boulevard. Soto Street is not Sepulveda Boulevard. Soto Street is not Wilshire Boulevard. Soto Street is a small street right where that hill goes over to the freeway. And to take away another 11 trees and move in another 18 feet into the park, that's double taking a property. So I don't want to waste your time, but uh, I think you can sense my objection to the idea of giving away this land as on principle. On principle, that's what this is about. And there's more issues related that impact has a part, but uh, of course we don't have time to do it. Else. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any additional public comments? So we're going to move on to five. A one. Um, Madam Chair, if 
We have public officials here this evening. I'm not sure what time frame they have, but I'm looking at the agenda here, and uh, for the last few months, we've been asking for some information regarding Elephant Hill Open Space Advisory Board. I would like to take item 6AII and move that up. That way we can have a discussion and then walk. And also, this takes, I will call for a motion to move 6AII and 6A triple I out of order. Okay, well, with council staff present here, so that way we get some updates on these two projects. So, I uh, formally, the motion is to take six, a double I, triple I out of order. Um, so, that's my motion. Second. Okay. So we will both. Oh, we have to vote. Right. All in favor of moving those two items out of order? Opposed? Abstention? 301. Okay. So, um, Madam Chair, we can go ahead and start on item 6A double I. Thank you. Here's an update regarding elephant Sure. Definitely do that. And in case anyone does not recognize Mr. Bugas, but yes. Councilman Deezer, Deputy. Oh. Thank you very much. All right, good evening to everyone. Hope everyone's doing well today. I just want to recognize my district director that's here, Zidane uh, Luera. <laughs> so um, I wasn't here at the last uh, land use meeting. Uh, there was a conflict in schedule on the previous one. Uh, it just so happens that every two months, uh, the Herman Local Issues meeting happens at the same time. So there's always a conflict, so there'll be days at times that I'm not here, days I'll be over there. So with that said, uh, that's the reasoning behind that. So in terms, uh, in regards to Elephant Hill, there were five acres uh, that were sold to the Mountains Cons uh, Recreation Conservancy, MRCA. Uh, so in terms of, of the transfer, that transfer is imminent. We're just waiting on last minute documents to be signed within the departments. So we're hoping for that to happen as soon as possible. And once that happens, uh, at the same time that that's happening, MRCA has been looking for funds uh, to apply for grants for uh, improvement of the open space, trails, and whatnot. Uh, so in the process, that's what's going on. We're waiting for that to happen officially. Uh, officially, it hasn't happened, but MRCA is working in terms of getting grants. Uh, and then once that happens, the official transfer happens, and they get those grants and those funds, they are more than, than willing, and we've talked with them about doing community outreach and getting the community involved at the end of the day how this open space is going to look. Okay? So again, uh, it's about community. Once that happens, we will let the community know and the community know uh, how we'll be able to move forward with that. Okay? Uh, in terms of, in addition, I just want to point, Elephant Hill is not just the five papers that were sold to MRCA. There are an additional 15 acres, and those were designed as open space, uh, and they have been protected where no uh, commercial development can ever occur, and those uh, 15 acres are still open, okay? Uh, if there are any questions related to that, I could just go ahead and move forward with uh, the, the parcel S, which is a CRALA. Uh, it is city owned. City owned. Some of them are city, city owned and some of them are um, privately owned, but they've been designated as no development can happen whatsoever. And uh, they, through the ordinance, they've been preserved as open space. I have a question. Do you know how much it was sold to uh, Just under half a million dollars. It's like 490 something thousand dollars. Uh, I think we should clarify that this is an agenda item. Any public comments, parts to fill out to speak, and then, and then we should uh, also um, give a chance for a board discussion. Mm -hmm. That's right. So sorry. Public comment. You have to fill out the form so we can call public comment. But for now, I think we have some questions on the board. Sure. I have a question for you. I heard that there 
there Elephant Hill had a committee? Is there a committee? Uh, no, because it's currently owned by the MRCA and they're the owners of that property. So there is no advisory board at one. There was one uh, that was formed through, if I'm not mistaken, Renee, through uh, uh, as a community group that was leading the effort to preserve Elephant Hill, but there isn't one a standing committee. <coughs> Right. Um, reason why, and I'll have kind of brought up a good question because at our last meeting, uh, a gentleman identified himself as a member of the Elephant Hill Advisory Board. No. Um, you see, board members are not either asked in agreement. Um, my my thought is that, and this goes back to the previous incarnation of the board, is that the by now that MRT is going to have their five acres, they'll be over jurisdiction on how they want to do their community outreach on their land once the deal is finalized. Yes. Still on the other acreage, there may be, my, my thought is that, like myself, I have two decades worth of experience in running environmental ed curriculum and running environmental education and traditional yeah. outdoor recreation programming for various agencies. And being that we have a wealth of students and school sites here in LA32 from Montanoma Elementary on the K-5 level to Wilson High School that are emphasizing environmental education curriculum, I would think that the process now that this land being set aside, we should have a, an advisory committee to start the stewardship process and sustainability process how that land is going to be utilized in the future. But likewise, um, I think over time, I've, I've seen when the when I've been to City Hall and actually been there in the last couple of years for topic for for both Sundays, I've seen people like Hugo Garcia, Alba Giannis, Marco Aguilar together as a group. And when they identify themselves in an advisory board, people who have been on an advisory board, whether it's at Des, whether it's Des Park, Ascot Hill, South Serena Park. Those advisory boards have got to operate under the Brown Act, okay? Yeah. Being that we're dealing with public land, public, and so forth. So that was one of my concerns is whether there is still a standing committee in place for Elephant Hill, whether they're meeting or not, what documentation is on file for what's been done, and if not, what do we, how do we go through the process of creating an advisory board on the 15 acres of land that is still owned by the city of LA? And how do we get involved in the start the engagement process to get people to buy in on what's going to be done with this location? And then also at the end of the day, I think there's a real, I think a lot of community members want to be very sure that open space remains open space, that all of a sudden buildings don't pop up that weren't originally going to go there. So those are my thoughts on this. So I think on this issue here, I would like the neighborhood council of the language committee to work in partnership with the council office to create this advisory committee on an additional 15 acres of land and does that we could start a process of identifying donors and identifying programs that eventually could create a model for sustainability in this community and also programming utilizing the developing brain trust students we have in this community. Okay. Uh, just to follow up with that, uh, I will report back in terms of creating a committee, what will it take? Uh, and to also answer your question, has there been meetings from the advisory board? There hasn't been any, because there is none really. That this again, that's something that was created as a community group, as they organize themselves to uh, uh, fight against development of the specific, the specific lands. And so I can report back and, and see what the process will be. And I suggest also, this is something that could be a rich regional effort because. Uh, there's also the Royal Central Neighborhood Council that is also within that 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 area. Which neighborhood council? A Royal a Royal Central Neighborhood Council. So it's LA32 or Royal Central Neighborhood Council. Yes. <coughs> no you, need yeah. you need a common card. Can you still public? Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um. <coughs> For, for those of you, there's some people here that I'm sure that don't know the history behind Elephant Hill. You want to kind of 
brief them on how we acquired the land. And, and the other question, there's two questions. Uh, we, Alley 32 never had a chance to review any, any of the agreements or negotiations with Santa Monica Conservancy. Uh, can you maybe enlighten us why that was the case? Normally, any time anyone comes to this community mm -hmm. and want to develop or under well, see, that's going to cut you off. I mean, it's within the Royal Sector Neighborhood Council, and portion of it does, I mean, it directly affects this area. So it's. It, so the Royal Sector did get. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what happened in terms of why they didn't come, why that wasn't ever, ever brought up for discussion well, within, portion, you know. Portions, yeah. portions of it is actually Alley 32 on the other, on the other side. So I mean, we, we do have the right to yeah. at least get first on what's going on. You, you want to explain what the, uh, the reason why we have this land? Well, so a couple of things. Uh, in terms of a brief history from what I know, uh, during the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there were uh, you know, ideas to develop that line and do condos and you know, exactly sort of similar to what Monterey Hills look like. So uh, at one point, then the community started getting involved in terms of preserving our hillsides, preserving our lands. And then the idea came up to let's, let's, let's work with the council office uh, to preserve our open space and our hillsides. Uh, so because of that, uh, through the, an advisory group that was created with the community, uh, worked with our council office and planning department to see how we can, you know, preserve these these, these lands and preserve uh, the the debt that the city owned. So an agreement was reached to go ahead and sell these these pieces of this, this parcel, five the five acres, uh, to the conservancy, to improve it into open space and trails, and the other fifteen are are being protected just as open space where no development will ever occur. I'd like to back up a second on yeah. that. Uh, the developer owned the land, and a few group, a group decided that we should have open space there. They found some problems with the developer's uh, pro of land, and with the councilman's office, they worked out a deal, although it, it turned into a lawsuit, which the city paid $9 million for. It. So that's how we acquired the land. Right? Yeah. Thank you, Al. Okay. For filling in those I pieces. just want to fill in the gap. Of course. Any other public comment? Uh, yeah, there is okay. two comments. I have two comment cards here. Jose Aguilar, followed by Anthony McDonald. I'm sorry, um, Anthony would not be here. Oh, we already have constituted quorum, so oh, yeah. any board members that are here and cannot participate um, in this. All right. Oh, okay. So, I have four members on. Okay. All right. Yes. So, I have, I have, can I ask a question? Yes. Is it regarding the subject? Yes, what he's speaking about. Um, my comment would be then, um, would you be the count up person in order for we can save our open space at the park and you guys would? Um, Collaborate with um, Friends of Hazard Park, and we're also building a Hazard Park advisory because I mean, if we are going to have to sue you guys, I do work for an attorney, and then you, the city's going to have to pay out another million, nine million dollars. That's a lot of money, yeah. you know. So at the end of the day, it'd be cheaper to fix our park with uh, maybe eight hundred thousand dollars than to pay out nine million dollars. So I think. Who would be the contact person in order for me to communicate with them? Would be you? Well, we're I, district I, directors I here. I'm so sorry. It's not related. Yeah, it's, it's the only yeah. problem is we. <laughs> yeah. You can. It's gotta be directly germane to the the agenda item. Oh, okay. Right. Well, then, right. do you have that case number that he just mentioned, and can you provide that for me? Yeah, we'll go ahead and get that. For okay, me. that's great. That's great. Right. So, so, do we have it. any additional questions regarding this? <laughs> <laughs> I had a card. Yeah, well, they had a card on this issue. Okay. First of all, uh, explain the $9 million settlement. How much did the uh, developer originally pay for 
Did the city have to pay the goodwill, the money that he lost in the development? I don't know. Part of the $9 million settlement? I don't know the specifics. Why, 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 why the $9 million? I want to get explanation as to why it was that high. And the other explanation is this. Doesn't the property have a chronic uh, problem with sinkholes or like some kind of water sinkhole issue there? Right, where the, the, there's like the water goes in and somehow the land kind of shifts around. Is there like a sink, sinkhole issue there? I, I'm not particularly sure for now, but I know there's a, a parcel within the CRA that had an issue with that, which is parcel S, which is different elephant hill. So if, if there is a sinkhole issue, I, wouldn't that make the property kind of like undeveloped? I mean, in other words, you couldn't develop the property because the, the, the land doesn't have the necessary uh, stability to build uh, construction. I mean, wait, isn't that a no-brainer? Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, I think you're confusing that issue with another parcel, which is parcel S, which is was owned by this, which is part of the CRA LA, which is now defunct. So that's a different item that's on the agenda. No, I thought I'm talking about elephant hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is. No. Um, Make, make a point of order here all day it's that public comments should be directed toward the board members okay on the agenda item okay well, we, we're, we're not engaging my, uh, Jose, no, 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 my question one. to the board is this Jose, does the property have Jose, a sinkhole issue excuse me here. right okay that's common but let's make sure that we run this meeting through protocol here right, you're addressing the, the board you're not in, you're not engaging Mr. Espedas here, you're engaging the comment to the board and the board. If you want to question him, then you question him away from the meeting format, okay? But we got to have order here, okay? Well, my question still stands. My question to the board is, does the property have a sinkhole issue? From what I understand, Elephant Hill has a sinkhole problem. Yes or no? That's well, that's your, your comments been read into the record, so we'll leave it at that for this moment. Do you mind yeah. answering that when you return? Uh, the next meeting? Yeah, definitely. Specific the specifics about that, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any additional comments? Um, I would put a formal motion on the floor that for the next meeting of the LA Church Nineties Committee that C D fourteen come back with with a response pertaining to an establishment of a ASCOT, I mean a Hilton Hills advisory board for the 15 acres outside the jurisdiction of MRCA, which is Mount Recreation and Conservation Authority. Also to question pertaining to the comments made by the by Mr. Aguilar pertaining to the sinkhole issues on the property because as you can imagine, any future development of open space opportunity would be contingent on risk management and we were creating up a trail somewhere. We wouldn't exactly want to fall into a little elephant pit. So let's make sure that we, we get those questions um, answered from the next meeting. So those are two. So if I could get a second on that motion. Um, before you second the motion, do you mind, Mr. Johnson, just clarifying it so we have a clear motion and everybody understands okay. it? Motion that Council District 14 return to the next regularly scheduled line use committee meeting with information pertaining to an establishment of the Elephant Hill Advisory Board. Second, information pertaining to the sea coal issues on Elephant Hill. Is there anyone that's going to second that motion? All in favor? All in favor for the motion? All in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know. How about there was another one, the CRA? Oh, yeah. Or, okay. yeah, yeah, number three. Number three. <laughs> Why? So the CRA, so that's a, a parcel that's in Monterey Hills. So that's 12 acre parcel. Uh, the MRCA has expressed interest in also obtaining that. Certain so discussions internally uh, to figure out that they have the capacity uh, to go ahead and take that on. Uh, so we're just waiting at the moment to see what uh, if that's something they want to take on and then we'll be able to move forward uh, to see what we can do to, for them to also take on that, uh, that parcel. Do we have any public comment regarding that issue? Thank you. 
anybody on the board have any questions regarding that, is that, that all you could elaborate on? For, yeah, for the CRA, yeah, no, that's all. What are, uh, if I may, um, what are some of the options on that 12 acre property? It's been maybe set, one of these set aside for open space or? Well, MRC takes it on, of course, that's what they, they're all about, open space and preserving of open space and again, taking that same concept that they will be using uh, for their five acres of Elephant Hill, also doing something similar for the, 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 known, the parcel known as Parcel S. Uh, Paul, one question? Um, on the, the agenda listing, I believe the UCRA now is probably, CRA is a relic now, it doesn't exist anymore. Yes. So what is the, probably the more ideal designation for the property? Because CRA has nothing to do with this property now, right? It's basically been re- so CRE does not have, or any other entity have jurisdiction over this property now? Come back to this. So the CRA is known as, remember the name, what's the new name for it? It's whatever Jan Perry's. Yeah, it's Jan Perry's new uh, position. Uh, so they want to basically just want to get rid of the, the property in the, in the proper way as, 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 as possible. So that's why MRCA is an interest in, in obtaining it. Okay. Yeah. Any further questions? Uh, yeah, for follow-up on this. So MRC has already made an interest on that property? Okay. Yeah, so they've, they've, they've uh, talked to CRALA, the CRA, <laughs> quote unquote the CRA, at our office about, have, you know, are you guys interested? They're interested. Again, they're trying to figure out their capacity internally, if that's something they could take on. Okay. And just so, so kind of people in here have an idea on the proximity the St. to Elephant Hill property, what's the the linkage or uh, difference in how far apart they are? Uh, I mean, the Elephant Hill for MRC that they bought is five. So there, there is no really linkage. There's no linkage because <laughs> it's on Monterey Hills.